Hello, and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I'm available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. In this episode, I am going to discuss the standard to address utility that is being added in C++20. And you can see it here. It is standard to address. What it does is it gives you the address of an underlying object, basically returning a an actual C style pointer to it, even in the face of being passed a smart pointer. So let's go ahead and play with this briefly and see what we can find with it. Now, of course, compiler support for C20 features is currently lacking, but we do have some ability here with a um, GCC 8.2 and with Clang at least to play with this, and we're going to do that right now. So we are just calling make unique on an integer, creating it with the value 15, and passing this into this int pointer object here. And we can see our new and delete being generated. Now, let's say we're working in some highly generic code for some reason, and we just, we just want the address of this thing. We want some way of being actually able to refer to a pointer. Now, it's true that there's not a whole lot of use cases for this in a general everyday code, but sometimes we are writing code where we're handling something in a wide variety of contexts in a library and we're past something and we just need to know, well, what is the underlying object here? So I'm going to do this in the form of a lambda. No captures. And I'm doing it so that I can actually have an auto parameter here. This is so much shorter than uh, actually writing a template. Now, as usual, I am using Compiler Explorer here, but I am also using my own custom instance of it that lets me actually execute the code that I'm typing in. So I'm passing in this int pointer into this lambda, and I expect that it's going to write out the address here. Now, I don't currently have my system configured to be able to use our lib format, in case you're wondering about that. This episode is, in fact, recorded after the one where I talk about lib format. But let's go ahead and compile this and execute it and see what output we're getting from the compiler. So we can see this value right here is being printed, and this is some random memory address. And this is with a unique pointer. So I'm going to go ahead and play around with this some more and see what kinds of things we can do a to address on. Now I really don't expect this to work because to address is expecting a pointer-like thing, and I'm passing in a plain integer here, so I'm expecting a compile error. And in fact, I am getting one here, and it's quite easy to read, as you can see. So something I, I often tell people is if you are getting this kind of an error back from the compiler and you're immediately overwhelmed, what you need to do is start with the very first line that says there's an error on it. And we've got this static assert element type value static assertion fails. Pointer type defines element type or is like some pointer. Yeah, that's not terribly useful yet. So let's get to our source code. No match for operator arrow arrow for to address. Operator less than less than that is. So it's kind of telling us something here. Basically we can see that we're passing something to to address that it doesn't like but I can give it a pointer-like thing, and it should be able to work there and also tell us a, a, a pointer value here to print out. Yes, so now we have two different pointer values. And we can notice something else interesting here, if you haven't spent a lot of time looking at this, is the two different address ranges. That's something that's created on the heap versus something that's created on the stack. So this is a stack variable, and we can see that it is a much higher value because it is starting kind of at the top and working its way down. And this is a heap variable, and it's a much smaller number, kind of starting at the bottom and working its way up for lack of a better way of putting that. And we can actually try to uh, see if we can observe that a little bit, although it's generally kind of completely outside the topic of this particular episode. 
So we are allocating two integers back to back and putting two integers on the stack back to back and we'll see what we see. So let's see here. We have the second integer allocated or the first integer that's allocated on the heap is here and then 10 uh, hex 10 bytes away so uh, 16 bytes away we've got the second object that was created on the heap this is not guaranteed at all but it worked out this way and then we can see here the first object that we created on the stack is at d4 and then the second object we created on the stack is at d8 so we can kind of observe how these things grow up and down in the code but beside the point so this is the point of to address though. We can pass it any kind of pointer like thing and it can give us the address of where that was created. So we're going to try one more thing here and we're going to create a iterator and see how that works. So I'm creating a vector of integers and I'm going to need to include my header. Now let's see if this can tell us the address of the underlying object when it was passed an iterator to the first object. And I expect this to work because iterators are kind of pointer-like things. They have this arrow operator overloaded and that's one of the things that the to address can work with. And yes, it does work here. And we can see that it is continuing to be allocated 16 bytes away down on the heap here. And that's because Vector is doing heap allocation, because that's what Vector does. And I guess we should expect if I do a plus one here, because a Vector is a contiguous allocator, then we should be able to see that this address is going to be approximately four bytes after the first one, since we're on a platform where int is 32 bits. Yes, so 7, 8, and then 7, C, B, C. That is four bytes away. So it's a pretty uh, potentially useful utility if you're working in highly generic code, something to be aware of. And just one other quick comment. If we go back to the definition here, we can see that they made an interesting, two interesting design decisions in the implementation of this for the standard library. The first is that they are using auto write here, assuming this is how the spec is actually done. Now when I've discussed this kind of decision, why don't more standard library utilities use auto return types with people who are involved in the standard, they say, well, it's not as good for Sven A friendliness. And if you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. But they did choose auto here. The other thing is that only the version that takes a raw pointer and returns a raw pointer is constexpr. But as we just saw, this does work with iterators, and we can get constexpr iterators to standard array and C style array objects. So I don't know what the decision was to not make this version constexpr because it definitely could be and actually should be for many possible real cases. Although if you need the actual underlying address of an object in any constexpr code, um, you're probably doing something weird. But anyhow, uh, thanks for watching this episode. I hope you liked it and learned something new.